Hi everyone, Eli here, and today we will be taking a look at getting started in Wonderland Engine. As with any piece of software, the first thing you're going to want to do is download it. So you can go to wonderlandengine.com downloads or click on the link in the description. Uh, and then you're going to want to choose the installer that best fits your current operating system. After you have that installed and you have signed in, you should see a page that looks something like this. Uh, if you don't, just click on the new tab and it should bring you to it. Um, for this tutorial, we're going to use the base template scene and I'm going to name mine tutorial, but you can name yours whatever you want to. Let's just click create. All right, we can now see our demo scene. Uh, before we mess around with anything, let's test it out. So the first thing we're going to want to do is click on the package button. This is the same thing as building in any other engine. It's going to package up our app and make sure it's ready to run on the web. The next thing we're going to want to do is click play. And that will bring it up in our web browser. So here we can see our app running in the browser. We can look around and move a little bit with a teleport mechanic. And we can also click this button. Now, if you have a PC VR headset set up and running, you would be able to click this button to enter VR and test it there. If, however, you have a quest, we will link a uh, tutorial in the description that will explain how to set up a quest for better debugging with Wonderland Engine and that makes it a little bit easier. Now let's take a look at the editor. In the center, we have the scene view. This will give you a preview of what your application will look like. If you select an object, you can see we have a gizmo that allows you to move it around. Um, and if you press the uh, R or S keys, uh, it switches it so you can either rotate or scale. Uh, and if you have ever used Blender, this will be very familiar to you. If we look over to the left here, we can see the scene outline. And this just displays a list of all the objects currently in our scene. Um, and if we click on, say, the button here, we can see that it also selects it over here in the outline. Now, looking over to the right, we can see the properties of the current object. Um, let's click on the button since it has some more stuff going on. Now, we can see that this object has a collision, a cursor target, and a button component added to it. And it's also kind of cool to notice that the icons of the things added to this line up to what we see in the scene view. So, mesh, mesh objects have boxes, lights have the light bulbs, uh, text has an A there. Now going back to here, let's try editing the button component so that we can count the number of clicks and display that on the, on the text here. So to do that, what we're going to want to do is open up the script and we can do that in two ways. We can either click on the three buttons here and click edit source, or we can go to the JS file in the asset browser and click on it here. And when we do that, it will bring it up in our text editor of choice for .js uh, files. And looking at it, we can see that the entire component is just a single function call. So we call wonderland.registerComponent and we pass in the name of the component that we want to register. Then we pass in an object with all of the attributes that we want this component to have. So we see that we have a button mesh object that is of type uh, Wonderland object. We have a hover material, which is just a material. And then we pass in an object with all the functions for our component. So the first uh, function that is always called on every single component is the start 
component. So that's where we want to set everything up. Um, we can see that in here we first uh, find the mesh component from the object that we set in the editor and we just store its default material so we can change it back to that later. Then we find the cursor target component since that's what allows us to actually click the button and then we want to set uh, which functions to call whenever anything happens. For example, on a hover, we want the on hover function of this uh, component to be called. So when the button is clicked, the on down function is called. Then after we set those callbacks, we just add two more components. So instead of getting components, we're adding them and we are just adding audio sources and setting their source to a sound in our directory there. The first thing that we're going to want to do is create a way for us to be able to grab uh, a text component to display the count of how many times the button has been pressed. So to do that, we're going to add a, another attribute and we're just going to call this button text object and that looks good next thing we're going to want to do is actually grab the text object from that so this dot button text object uh, dot get component text and then we're going to just want to store that in this dot button component like that. And we'll also want to set up a count variable. So this dot count. And before doing anything else, let's set this in our inspector here. So you can see that a new attribute has been added to the properties panel, not set to anything at the moment. Now to set it, we can either use the drop down and scroll through literally everything in our scene, or we can choose the smarter object uh, option and use the eyedropper here and just click button label over here. And that's just this thanks text right here. Now with that set, we can go back and let's add our code to on up. So what we'll want to do is say this dot text component dot text since that is the property we want to change. And let's keep the text as thanks. And just add X and then the number of times we've clicked the button. So we'll just say plus this dot count to string just like that. And then right before we set the text, let's increment count just like that. So real quick before testing it out, um, this is actually text component, not button component. And then we'll just want to package and then go to our browser and it should automatically reload anytime we change, uh, anytime we package. There we go. That's all for this tutorial. If you need any more help with this or anything else, the Wonderland Discord server will be linked in the description below. So if you need help or just want to hang out, you can find us there. But until the next tutorial, I'll see you guys around.